Uh, today we're going to be talking about a really exciting part of bird watching and uh, we're in the midst of it right now. It's migration period. So we're, be going, we're going to be looking at migratory birds uh, for the springtime. And uh, so we have got a lot of pictures for you, a lot of sounds for you to hear as we go along. But I thought I'd start by telling us uh, all a little bit about bird migration. Um, this happens every year, um, mostly north and south along a flyway. And this is the track that you can just think of it as a big highway that the birds travel on. Um, it's, uh, they travel between their breeding territory and their, wherever they spend their winters. Uh, so lots of different birds uh, migrate. They do it mainly for two reasons, looking for food and also to mate and to have their, their young. And uh, here in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, birds travel north and south. Uh, they cross the Caribbean Sea, coming up from uh, Central America, South America, up through the United States into Canada. And they mostly, the ones that we see, end up in the northern part of Canada in what's called the boreal forest, which is a really, really important uh, habitat. It's where most of our songbirds actually go in the spring and summer to make their nests and have their young. So it's a really, really important part of, uh, of our environment here in Canada. Uh, some birds travel huge distances on their migration as well. Uh, the Arctic tern, it's a seabird, holds the longest distance migration record for birds. It travels all the way from the Arctic to the Antarctic each year. Some species such as the albatross circle the earth flying over the southern oceans and uh, another seabird called the Manx shearwater. It travels 14,000 kilometers every year in its migration. That's 8,700 miles. So uh, migration is a bit of a mystery. People, scientists study as to how do the birds know when to do this and what spurs them on, what guides them on their route and is controlled, they think, primarily by changes in the day length. And uh, how do they travel? How do they find their way? Uh, they use clues in the sky, celestial cues from the sun and the stars. Also, they think from the Earth's magnetic field, and they map things out in their, in their DNA and in their mind. They know which route they're supposed to take. Uh, so there's a lot of mystery and some intrigue, I think, to uh, migration. It's a pretty neat thing that birds do. And not only birds migrate, there are other creatures on the planet that migrate too. People, believe it or not, even migrate. People in Canada sometimes, snowbirds we call them, they don't like the winter and they head south for the, uh, for the winter. Kind of what the birds do, same sort of thing. So migration is used by lots of different creatures on the planet. So we have different types of birds. We have permanent residents that, that don't migrate. Those are birds like a house sparrow, for example, that stays here with us all year round. Summer residents are migratory birds such as purple martins. They come into our yards in the spring, they nest during the summer, and then they go back to the winter grounds uh, in the fall. Winter residents are some birds that come down from the north and spend their winter here with us, things like snowy owls, snow buntings, those types of birds. And transients, there are migratory species that uh, nest farther north than our neighborhoods, but who also winter farther south. So we see those birds as they're passing through. We don't see them the whole year, the whole migration period. We just see them in a short window as they pass by us, heading to their uh, migratory grounds. So on this map, you see that there are four major flyways in North America, and we are located on uh, the uh, number four, the Atlantic Flyway, which goes up along the uh, eastern uh, states and provinces, mostly Quebec and the Maritimes for Canada. We sometimes get a little bit of uh, 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 lapping over of number three, the Mississippi Flyway. There's a bit of a crossover there that uh, can happen. Especially birds can get blown off course, uh, moving east and west a little bit sometimes. So some of the birds that are in number three here occasionally could drift over and vice versa. So, but this is the main one that affects us here in Quebec, uh, the Atlantic Flyway. So we're gonna start looking at some of the birds that we're going to see, some that we've already seen and uh, some new ones that we're gonna be looking for 
coming in the, in the uh, days and weeks ahead. Um, now, this little guy, we not so little, he's kind of big, but we saw him last week, and we have lots and lots of the common grackle around us now. Uh, we'll let you hear what he sounds like. Not a very pleasant sounding bird, but uh, pretty impressive looking, and he's got kind of a squawky type of sound. Common grackle. our common grackle. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice already. <laughs> the other ones that are back now, we've seen them a lot. The red-winged blackbirds, really nice colorful bird. The bird you're seeing here is the male. Uh, the female looks much different, but the male has that bright red patch on his wing and a little bit of yellow there and a dark, dark black bird. We'll uh, take a listen to their really nice call. Red-winged blackbird. A really familiar sound for spring. So now let's look at some really exciting birds. And these are birds that um, pretty much all of these birds were away for the winter and they're working their way back to see us now. My dog is barking like crazy in the background. I don't know if you're picking that up. Uh, but let's look at some of these birds. Now we live on an island. Montreal is an island. We have lots of water around us. So we see uh, a lot of water birds in addition to, uh, to other birds. Uh, if you have a chance, uh, if you near, live near the water, or you may live uh, somewhere where there's a lake or the river, uh, even marshes that we have around the Montreal area. These are some of the birds that we've seen coming back now. Uh, the top left is the great egret. Some people call this a white heron. They think it's the same type of bird as this, only white, but it's actually a different type of bird. These birds actually breed right here in the Montreal region. Um, Heron Island, which is out near Ville La Salle on the St. Lawrence River, we have both these great egrets and the great blue heron that make their nests on that island. So we see these birds quite often around Montreal. They're quite large uh, birds. Uh, the smaller cousins of these two birds, down here we have the black crowned night heron, and on the right at the bottom, the green heron, a very colorful bird, looks almost like it's been hand painted by somebody. Uh, bright yellow legs and uh, yellow in the face, this uh, sort of rusty mahogany color, reddish brown, greens and blues, really very colorful birds. So these are all quite common around the Montreal region. Uh, probably the least common of the four of them in Montreal itself would be the green heron, but if you get to marshes in the area, uh, you have a good chance of seeing green herons as well. We also have, because of all of the water, we have a lot of birds that are out on the water. Uh, birds that look like ducks in some cases, but aren't necessarily ducks. Up in the top corner, we have the common loon, and uh, some people I know go up into the lakes up in the Laurentians. Uh, but even here on the St. Lawrence River, we do get to see loons occasionally. And this is the great call of the loon. Common loon. Okay. Whoops. Sorry about that. I'm going to go back. Um, up on the top uh, right hand corner, uh, you may see these birds standing out in the river on a log or whatever with their with their wings stretched out like this. This is called the double crested cormorant. It's a diving bird that goes into the water and catches fish. It's uh, all black, that big yellow bill. And uh, we see these in big colonies around Montreal. Uh, they do nest in our area. Uh, this very small weird looking bird in the middle is a very tiny bird called the pied billed grebe, and he's got a really interesting sound as well. Let's take a listen to him. Pied billed grebe. Quite a neat sound. 
Uh, down at the bottom corner on the left, we have the Canada Goose. Which probably, oops, he hasn't finished yet. I think I can. I'm not sure if I can stop him. There. Pied build yeah, green. Well, we don't want you to do that again. Pied build green. Hang on two seconds, folks. We'll go back this way. That'll stop him. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Down here, the Canada goose, and we see lots of these around, lots flying over us right now. Some of them will be nesting in our area, others going further north. And you see one group here, two of them with their little babies beside them. And this is a marsh bird in the bottom right hand corner called the common gallinule. It um, used to have another name called the common moorhen. It kind of looks like a chicken that hangs out in the water. It's all black and has that bright orange beak. And he's got a pretty neat sound. Uh, it almost sounds, to me, it reminds me a little bit of a chimpanzee, some sort of monkey. Take a listen to this weird sound. Purple gallinule. Oh, we have to go through the purple first. There's two birds. We'll come to the common gallinule in a second. They added two birds together here for some reason. Common moorhen. Yeah. Find a chimpanzee sound. <laughs> okay, so we'll move on from those birds. And these are some of the ducks that we see around us. Lots of different types of ducks. Uh, the most common one that we have around us is the mallard. And we looked at those birds a couple weeks ago in the first 20 species we were looking at. But lots of other uh, types of ducks are coming through our area right now. Uh, in the top left-hand corner, we have the American widgeon, sort of a rusty colored duck with a light color stripe on his head. Uh, the mallards over here, you see the difference between the male and the female. They look very, very different. Below the mallards, we have the common merganser, a very large duck, white on the bottom, a greenish color head and a bright orange beak. This is the male in the front and the female in the back. So they look very different again. The middle bird here is a neat bird called the northern shoveler. And picture a shovel. And look at that gigantic shovel-shaped beak that he has. That's what makes that bird stand out. Much bigger beak. He uses that shovel to dig into the ground in the, in the mud underneath the water and uh, pick up his food from under the water. Uh, to the left of him, we have the gadwall, sort of a grayish color duck with a black uh, butt on the end of him. Below him, we have the hooded merganser. It's a relative of these guys up here, another type of merganser. Male in the front with that white hood and the female in the back here. They're quite small ducks actually. And this really impressive looking duck over here is the wood duck. Really nice colored duck, all sorts of different colors on him. Another bird that almost looks painted. And uh, as a matter of fact, the last couple of years has been wood ducks nesting in Beaver Lake up on Mount Royal. Uh, so that was kind of a bit of a surprise. Normally we wouldn't see them there, but uh, the last couple of years we did see that happening. We also have some raptors around our area. These are the big hawks and falcons that we see in our area. Uh, we have the one that likes fish, which is called an osprey, a large bird here. Uh, we'll play a bit of his sound. Osprey. We come down here to a, uh, I'll play this, well, let's go over here first to the right. This is a bird, believe it or not, that you can see right in town. We have one of these Cooper's Hawks who comes into our yard. Um, I live on the South Shore of Montreal and uh, one of these Cooper's Hawks comes into our yard quite often. Now, the reason he comes into our yard is we have a lot of bird feeders and these hawks like to eat small birds. 
So every once in a while, he may come in and try to catch something around our feeders. Um, it's one of those things. I mean, he has to eat. So he comes to a place where he can find food. And unfortunately, once in a while, a small bird might get picked off out of our bird feeders. One thing he seems to particularly like is not a small bird. He likes pigeons, <laughs> believe it or not. So uh, he's a pretty powerful bird. He can actually catch a pigeon. And he's done that a couple times in our yard uh, when we've had pigeons or morning doves or things like that. So it's a good size hawk, not anywhere near the size of the osprey, but he's, uh, he's a pretty powerful little bird. And uh, we do see them around residential areas sometimes now. Uh, down in the bottom here, we have a very large hawk called a red-tailed hawk. You can see why he's called that. He has his bright red tail. Next to him is the uh, peregrine falcon. And uh, we just got word this week that the peregrine falcons had eggs hatch in a nest on the old Champlain Bridge. Uh, they made their nest on the bridge and uh, people were monitoring the nests and uh, the eggs uh, hatched. And so there is now at least one new baby peregrine falcon being brought up in that nest. This bird was an endangered species for a very long time. It's still on the list, I believe, but we're starting to see more and more of them uh, repopulate now. So that's really, really good. Now, wherever you may be, even in residential areas, you may be seeing this little bird in the bottom right-hand corner. And this is the smallest one of the falcons called the Merlin. And these have become very common in residential areas. Many neighborhoods in Montreal have heard this bird and seen it and wondered what it was. And it is the Merlin. And listen to this song because you may hear it right around your own neighborhood. American Kestrel. Sounds like the Kestrel too. We'll play the Kestrel first, which is a similar bird. And then we'll hear the Merlin. comes to Merlin. Merlin. There you go. Now they normally make that noise in flight as they're flying past. You'll hear them making that sound. So uh, something to listen for and to look for. Uh, we have two of them in our neighborhood here. We've seen them the last uh, three or four weeks in a row now. So uh, they are probably nesting somewhere very close to us in our area. They usually look for very large trees. They like big evergreen trees where they can hide their nest inside the trees very easily. Okay, some of the other birds we see here. Um, I'll play a couple of the songs. I won't play all of them because we won't get through all of them, but um, the northern flickers, we've just seen them back in the last couple weeks. We have a pair of them flying around our yard quite regularly now. It's uh, the second largest woodpecker that we have. Uh, got a very interesting sound. Northern flicker. very loud and very colorful as well that black crest on his chest red on the head up here very big bird as well we'll move over to this next guy as he finishes One thing you'll learn from this is that the same bird can have many different sounds as well. They have very unique voices, these birds, and can make a whole variety of different sounds. This is, goes, it's common with a lot of birds. Uh, the giant woodpecker in the middle here is the pileated woodpecker or pileated, some people pronounce it. Uh, we have these in residential areas as well. I know a lot of people in the West Island see these birds even coming to their feeders. Uh, sound is a little bit similar to that flicker, so we'll, we won't play that one. Uh, the yellow-bellied sapsucker. This is a really nice bird that's coming back into the area right now. Um, he's a little bit smaller than the flicker, a little bit bigger than, well, almost the same size as this hairy woodpecker. 
but he has a lot of different markings on him. And uh, he's got a, a nice little sound as well. Yellow-bellied sapsucker. That's his hammering. Down the bottom here. <laughs> Let me. Okay, I think he's done. Okay, down the bottom are the two common woodpeckers. We don't only see these now in in migration, but we do see these year round. So I just put them on there for comparison because you may be seeing all five of these different woodpeckers if you're watching birds at this time of the year. Now, we're starting to get birds coming in that eat insects. And it's pretty obvious why we wouldn't have them in the winter. Uh, there's no insects around, so they wouldn't have any food. So these are birds that definitely leave us, go down to uh, the southern parts of the planet uh, for this, uh, win our winter months. And now they're returning. So we're starting to see these birds coming back. Um, what I'll do is run through all of them first and then I'll play a couple of the songs so we can interrupt uh, the songs. We don't have to play the full songs. The first bird is a sort of a black and gray and white bird called the Eastern Kingbird. An interesting mark to identify him is that the tip of his tail is white. So you'll see that uh, usually, you know, nicely perched with uh, displaying those colors. The bird beside him, another type of flycatcher called the Eastern Phoebe. Similar looking, no white tip on the tail though with this guy. Uh, the great crested flycatcher, this is the largest flycatcher we have. He has a lot of nice colors on him. Um, so you've got some different colorings to be able to help identify him. The red-eyed vireo, uh, these birds I haven't seen one yet this spring. Uh, they should be coming in shortly. They do have that bright red eye, uh, kind of a drab colored looking bird though. The warbling vireo is a kind of a nondescript bird. It's just more or less monotone colors, uh, not really a lot of flashy colors on him. And finally, though, a really interesting bird called the gray catbird. And uh, he's got this nice rusty patch under his tail. He's got a little black hat that he wears, and the rest of the bird is gray. And he's called catbird for a reason. Listen to his song and see what might sound like some other creature. Gray Catbird. Oh. There's the cat. So he's called a cat bird for a reason. He does make a sound almost identical to a cat meowing. Uh, I'll let you hear the, uh, the red-eyed vireo. Red-eyed vireo. And the Phoebe, the Phoebe is nice because he says his name. Listen to him say Phoebe. Eastern Phoebe. 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 I like when birds say their own name. Helps you identify them. Uh, so let's see. Uh, Black Whiskered Vireo. Oh, he's going to play another one. Okay, let's move on to the next page and look at some other birds. Okay. Um, First two birds on the top here are called swallows. And we find these around uh, marshes in particular, anywhere where there's water, because they, they catch insects, sometimes swooping just over the water. A little tiny insects that we can't see ourselves most often. Uh, two of the more common ones, probably the most common one is the tree swallow. Uh, very shiny blue on the males and white underneath. The females are more grayish color on the back and white underneath. 
and uh, they will uh, nest in boxes. You might see boxes that have been installed in some of the marshes around us by birding clubs in many cases, and uh, the, the uh, swallows will use those. Uh, the barn swallow we see out in farm fields a lot, swooping around. They have this long, skinny, forked tail, which is uh, pretty obvious to see. They have some nice coloring, a reddish patch under their chin, and sort of a creamy color underneath. Two very, very tiny birds down below here. On the left is the house wren. And these birds will nest in, in boxes, in bird nests in boxes, similar to this. Um, there's a number of these we see up at the Mount Royal Cemetery that nest up there quite regularly. And uh, when we get back to the marshes again, we see a similar bird called the marsh wren. Uh, the tree swallows and the barn swallows I won't play. They're very common sound, not, not too fancy, but I'd like you to hear the house wrens and the marsh wren. Very tiny, tiny birds, but uh, they make a lot of noise. Let's listen to the house wren first. House wren. Very chattery sounding bird. And I've got to move this because I can't see the, uh, oops, I can't, oh, can I get to my, there it is. Okay, let's listen to this marsh wren. Now this is really a very tiny, tiny little bird. If you can see my hand there, it's a, you know, maybe a couple inches long. But listen to the big sound out of this little bird. Marsh wren. And if you see that bird when he's singing, the whole bird literally shakes and trembles as that sound is coming out of his little tiny body. It's a pretty neat little bird. Hard to see though sometimes because they like to hide in the tall grasses and reeds. So this is where listening is important. If you learn the song, you can hear it and then start to look for it after you've heard it. Now, this is a part of uh, bird life that most bird watchers get really excited about. And it's when the warblers start to come into our region. Now, many of these birds, uh, some of them will stay in our area for the spring and summer and make their nests here, but a lot of them don't, and they move further north and go up into the boreal forest that we were talking about earlier. Uh, the birds, though, that I've picked out here are mostly birds that we do see around us that do tend to nest in our area. So we may have a more of a chance of seeing these particular warblers. Now, they're very tiny, tiny birds. They eat insects, so they are constantly on the move. So they're sometimes hard to track down and to get a good look at. So it's, uh, this takes a little bit more skill, but one thing you can do with these birds is to learn their birds' songs because they sing a lot. And we often identify these birds by hearing them first and then going to try to find them, try to look for them. So we'll review them first and then I'll play a couple of the songs. I haven't figured out how to stop the songs on each bird. So what I'll do is skip back and forth the page because that stops the song. Uh, so first off is probably the, the most common one we see around us all spring and summer is the yellow warblers. Now these are just starting to come back. It's pretty much an all yellow bird, a couple different tones of yellow. Uh, the next one, the yellow rumped warbler. And that's because just on the back of his tail here, he has a very bright yellow spot, but he also has yellow on the head, on the wing, and under his chin. When we get into some of the marshes, you might see this little guy, the common yellow throat. He's got a little mask on him and a yellow chest and a sort of an olive colored, uh, brownish colored back. This black, blue, and white bird is called the black-throated blue warbler. So the names are very descriptive in some cases. Black-throated, blue, and it's a tiny, insect eating bird, one of the warblers. The Nashville warbler, sort of a bluish gray head, a big circle around his eye, yellow underneath, a little olive color on the back. The black throated green, black throat, sort of a greenish color on the back and a yellow face and some black and white striping. And this really nice one in French, he's called flamboyant. He's very flamboyant, bright colors, black and orange is his American uh, Red Starts colors. 
pretty dominant colors. So let's listen to a couple of these quickly. The one you most probably will hear as you travel around a bit, once we can travel around a bit, <laughs> uh, if we're not locked in our house again, uh, which we still are, unfortunately, uh, the yellow warbler. Yellow warbler. Kind of quiet, they're small birds, so the sounds aren't big. Let me go back and come back again. Um, the, com uh, the yellow rumped warbler. Yellow rumped warbler. You'll note the songs are very different for each of these birds. So what makes them distinct in addition to how they look is how they sound. Go backwards so I'm not giving you previews that way. Uh, the common yellow throat. Common yellow throat. They're mostly very repetitious, so you can hear the sound many times. Okay. Let's go back again. Um, the Nashville. Nashville warbler. Kind of hard to hear. There's patterns, though, that you can learn to follow. It's little whistles and then like a trill at the end of it. Very distinct. Okay. The black-throated green. Black-throated green warbler. And finally, the red start. American red start. So you got to have good ears for some of these birds because the sounds are not really loud, uh, but they're very distinct. And uh, we try to learn these songs, as I said, because these birds are sometimes very hard to find because they move around a lot. They're very tiny. And uh, they're sometimes, once the leaves are out on the trees, it gets really hard to find some of them because they're so small and they move around in the leaves. Uh, this is a collection of sparrows that we are starting to see. We had a couple of three of these, four of these actually in our yard this past Saturday. Some of them were in our yard today here at home. Uh, the tiniest one is this little guy with a little rusty cap on him. It's called the chipping sparrow. Uh, beside this, we saw this one for the first time this season on Saturday, the white crowned sparrow. It's basically all gray underneath, some brown on the back, that yellow beak, and black and white stripes on the head that really jump out. So it makes it kind of obvious to see. Uh, below him in the center, another one with black and white stripes on his head, but a little bit of yellow in the face, and he doesn't have, uh, um, he's got this white throat, which the uh, white crown doesn't have. So that's in his name, white-throated sparrow and a lot of these birds around, an awful lot of them. Song sparrows, uh, they are back and uh, they have this uh, streaky colored chest and they have this black dot in the middle of their chest and they like to sit on wires or branches and throw their head back and sing. And if you get out to the marshy areas, you might see this little guy, which is the swamp sparrow. He's more of a rusty colored sparrow, got some striping on the head as well, a little bit of striping underneath as well, a little bit more coloring in that sparrow. I'll just play a couple of these for you. The white throat uh, is one that I really like because I think his song sounds like something. And if you keep this in your mind as you hear it, you'll hear two notes. He'll whistle and then you'll hear a repetitive sound of three notes. And to me and what we use as bird watchers is we call this a mnemonic, words that sound like what the bird is calling. And in this one, to me and to a lot of people, it sounds like the bird is saying, Canada, Canada, Canada. 
listen to it closely and tell me if you think that's what it sounds like. It sounds like that to me. Some people, they don't really hear it, but listen closely and think of Canada, Canada, Canada repeating in your head and see if you can match it up with what the bird sounds like. White-throated sparrow. Canada, Canada, Canada. It's a bit of a stretch for some people. They can change the pitch too. And the song sparrow is pretty neat. I'll play him. This is a appropriately named song bird. sparrow. Song sparrow. He's got great song. It's a very common sound that you'll hear all over the place these days. Okay, now we're getting to some really exciting, colorful birds coming up. Look at the colors. Amazing how many. Uh, we start with the Baltimore Oriole. Uh, bright orange bird, black head, black wings, white stripes, and uh, a really impressive looking bird. Uh, these birds come here, they stay here all spring and summer. We see them nest. Uh, they can be around your backyard, in your trees, uh, just have to look for them. Quite easy to spot and quite easy to hear as well. We'll play the song in a minute. Uh, next to it, we have the rose-breasted grosbeak, uh, black, uh, white underneath, and w how we call this, this red thing on his chest is a, we call it a bib. And it actually looks like, uh, the little joke we have about this bird is it looks like a bird that's been drinking wine it accidentally dribbled some down his chest. Uh, that's the red uh, blotch that you see come down on his chest. A really nice looking bird, great sounding bird as well. This two-tone bird in the right hand top corner is the brown headed cowbird. It's a black bird, but the head is completely brown. So that stands out quite nicely in contrast. This spectacular looking bird, uh, we see these a lot up in uh, Mount Royal Cemetery. They nest up there and in the West Mount Summit as well up on Mount Royal. Uh, the Scarlet Tanager, bright red bird, big black wing. Uh, the female though isn't red. She's sort of an olive green color. I don't have a picture of her here, but uh, looks very different than the male. This is a spectacular looking bird when you see them. The Cedar Waxwing, Lots of great coloring on this bird. You see the yellow tips on the tail. Has little bits of red and yellow on the wings, the wing tips. And has uh, got this black and white mask around his face and that pointed uh, tuft on the head. It helps you identify it as well. And then again, we go back to the water. Around the marshes, you might see the belted kingfisher with the spiky punk hairdo, uh, the reddish and white on the chest and the gray back and gray head. So let's listen to a couple of these because they're really amazing songs on these birds. Let's listen to the Baltimore Oriole. Baltimore Oriole. Lots of different sounds. Okay, let's go next to uh, the grosbeak, the rose-breasted grosbeak. Rose-breasted grosbeak. That rose-breasted grosbeak can often be confused with a robin. 
robin sound is very similar to that and sometimes we get confused even if you're a long time bird watcher you may think wow is that a robin or is that a grosbeak sounds very similar some of the song does at least uh, we'll listen to the cowbird and this isn't like the catbird the cowbird doesn't sound like a cow like the catbird sounded like a cat brown-headed cowbird Kind of quiet and chattery. Okay, let's take a listen to this bright colored guy here, the Scarlet Tanager. Scarlet Tanager. Cedar Waxwing. This one you'll have to listen closely because he's got a really quiet song. Cedar Waxwing. It's that very high, high pitched kind of a whining sound. So this one you really have to be listening closely. And on the other end of the scale is the very noisy belted kingfisher. Belted kingfisher. Some more colors, brilliant colors on these birds. First bird, the indigo bunting. This is predominantly an all blue bird. He's got a little bit of blackish coloring in him, uh, but um, blue is the, the, the color that stands out obviously. These birds also been found uh, nesting up at the Mount Royal Cemetery. Um, if you look around, you might run into these. Uh, if you get out into the country a little bit to see these birds next to him, the eastern meadowlark, these are what are called field birds. They're out in mainly in big, open, wide farm fields, things like that. Probably not going to find this in your backyard because uh, they do like big, wide open spaces. But it is a bird that's now coming back into our region. Uh, the eastern towhee is, uh, looks kind of like a robin sized bird, black on top. Uh, this big rusty patch and white underneath. Uh, we're starting to see a few more of these this species coming around our region, a little more than we have in the last few years for some reason. Uh, back out into the, into the field birds, we see the bobolink, which is a really nice bird. This is an endangered species, unfortunately, though. Uh, we've been losing a lot of these birds. Uh, black underneath, this big yellow patch on the head and some white mixed in as well. Eastern bluebirds, uh, one thing that our Bird Protection Quebec organization does is we install bluebird boxes every year at Mount Royal Cemetery. And we've been very successful in attracting bluebirds to the mountain and uh, successful breeding taking place in those nest boxes. So every year we've been, for the, I don't know how many years now, we've been very lucky to have bluebirds uh, breeding, having their young up in the Mount Royal Cemetery area. So uh, really nice to see these bluebirds up there. They're not totally blue, uh, blue on top. Uh, they've got that sort of rusty color a little bit underneath and, and white. Uh, the females are not quite as uh, bright as the, um, as the males are in their plumage. And a uh, bird that a lot of people reported this past weekend starting to see around our area is the brown thrasher. It's a very large bird, about the size of the grackles that we saw at the beginning maybe even a little bit bigger. And they're starting to come back into our area as well. So some really neat songs here. We'll take a listen to these. The Indigo Bunting to start with. Indigo Bunting. It's 
that's indigo bunting. Uh, we'll listen to the meadowlark. This is a kind of an interesting sound. Eastern meadowlark. Very squeaky sound. Uh, we'll have some fun with this next one, with the towhee. We talked about the white-throated sparrow saying the words Canada, Canada, Canada. At least that's what some of us think. This bird, we put in one of these mnemonic sounds to his call. And think of this term in your mind when you're listening to him. Drink your tea. Drink your tea. Drink your tea. And listen to the towhee. Eastern towhee. Drink your tea. Once you get that into your head, it's hard to get it out. <laughs> so if you hear a bird that sounds like he's saying, drink your tea, you might have an Eastern towhee around you. Now the bobolink's got a really weird sound. I think this one sounds almost metallic, made of metal. We used to, have, when we were kids, we had these weird toys that you wound up and they made sort of a clunky type of sound. Listen to the sound of this bird. It sounds almost like some sort of machine, I find. Bobolink. Particularly the beginning of the song sounds very metallic sounding, I find. And the bluebirds, and listen for these if, you know, once we're up and walking around in the parks and the fields and uh, particularly up at the cemetery if you're in Montreal, uh, you may hear this sound because they are definitely up there. Eastern bluebird. Now, one thing interesting about the bluebirds is people do put up bluebird boxes out on their farms as well. Uh, but bluebirds are very fussy, very specific. The, box, the nest boxes have to be as, at least a certain distance apart from each other. They also have to be facing a certain direction or the birds won't use them. They're very, very particular about this. So you can go online if you know somebody that has a farm and they're interested in putting up some bluebird boxes. Uh, you have to read up on this to see, you know, where to put them, how far apart to put them, which direction to have them facing in order for them to be successful for them to attract the birds to those houses. So uh, not a lot of birds are that fussy, but the bluebirds certainly are. And let's listen to the thrasher because he's got a whole bunch of different songs that he likes to sing. Brown thrasher. So there are a lot of choices. It's only scratching the surface as well because there are many, many more birds. Just to prove something to you, we've been doing, uh, because we can't go out and do our regular field trips, Bird Protection Quebec for the last five weeks now has been doing what we call virtual field trips. Our people, our members have been watching birds from their home, from their backyard, from their balcony, from their driveway, from their deck, what have you, and just keeping record of the birds that they've seen. And in the first five weeks that we've been doing this, we do it every Saturday morning, and everybody is welcome to participate in this, but the rule is you have to do it from your home. We've had over 64 people now, at 65, I think, something like that, 
uh, different people doing this on Saturday mornings and recording all the birds that they see. In the six, five weeks that we've done this, believe it or not, we now have a total number of species that have been seen, and this is around the Southern Quebec region, including Montreal, 92 species of birds have been seen over the last five weeks. What we're hoping this Saturday is to reach the 100 mark. And we think we might because more birds are migrating. Some of these species that we looked at today haven't made it here yet. So we're hoping that we can get a few new ones on the list this week and get us up over the 100 mark. So that's going to be pretty exciting. So um, if any of you like to part would like to participate in this bird watching activity on Saturday mornings, it's really easy to do. On the screen, you have our Bird Protection Quebec website. And you also have our Facebook group. Both of those uh, resources have information on how to participate in our Saturday morning virtual birding trips. So you can just read up on them there, keep a record of what birds you see on Saturday morning and email it into us and your numbers will get added to our master list. Um, if you see a bird, you're not sure what it is, if you can describe it for us or if you can snap a picture of it even, maybe on a phone or on your camera, uh, if you can't figure out what it is, you could maybe find out what it is by doing some research online, or you can simply send us a picture and say, hey, can you help us out with what bird this is? So you see our, our email address on the screen as well. So we're around and we can help you uh, identify some of the birds as well. So that's something uh, that you might be interested in doing. Um, and we have other seminars, uh, webinars coming up with uh, Learn Quebec uh, next uh, Wednesday. At two o'clock, we're gonna be talking about raptors. We'll go into more detail about all the different hawks and owls and vultures and falcons that we can see in and around our area in Southern Quebec. So that's coming up next Wednesday. And the following Wednesday for if you're interested in gardening and attracting birds to your house, we're gonna talk about bird friendly gardening making your yard or your uh, garden friendly to birds. Some putting different types of plants, flowers, what have you in your garden that will help you attract different types of birds. So we have a couple more of those sessions coming up over the next couple of weeks. So uh, if you enjoyed today, you can come back and register for those two upcoming events as well. So I think we're gonna open it up to any questions that people may have. If you wanna see or hear one of the birds that we looked at again, just let me know and I can scroll back to the page and we can talk about it. So if you do have any questions, um, we can take those questions at this point. My first question is, is there gonna be a quiz? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I don't, I don't think so. You'd need more time to study. I but, think so. uh, you know, that, like you said earlier, though, uh, the nice thing is uh, Learn Quebec is recording this session and it will be available on their YouTube channel if you want to go back and take some notes or look at the pictures again. Um, I don't, uh, well, you'll hear the songs. You won't be able to play the songs yourself, but you'll be able to hear them on the recording. Uh, but then you can go and look them up as well online. And, and we recommend a website for you uh, that's called allaboutbirds.org allaboutbirds.org and on there you can put in the name of any bird you want and it'll come back with a page that shows you pictures of the bird, a description, it plays an, an audio clip for you, um, it even has some videos to show you the bird and moving around and what have you. Uh, so that's a really really good resource for you to, um, uh, to find out more about birds and as I said it's called All About Birds. One other thing I'll mention before we take another question is uh, on our website uh, at birdprotectionquebec.org, uh, we've shown this on each of the sessions. This is a checklist of all the different species that are available in our region. It's a bilingual list. You have the names of all the different birds and you can actually download this off of our website, keep a copy of it, and you can use it as a scorecard there's a little box beside each bird species. And each time you see a different species, you can check it off the list. And therefore you can keep a list of how many different species you've been able to see. So it's on our, on our website. You can download a copy of it. It's in a PDF and print it out. And uh, it's a really handy little scorecard to keep handy. Also helps you learn all the names of the birds in both English and French, which is really handy to have as well. 
So uh, just look for that. It's called the List of Birds of Montreal. Um, and uh, believe it or not, there are over 300 different species of birds listed on this, uh, this little card. So uh, a really important uh, little document you might want to uh, download and print it out for yourself. Okay, were there any other questions? I don't see any in the chat, but if someone wants to unmute their microphone, they can uh, ask Sheldon a question directly since we're a nice sure. small group today. We just wanted to say uh, thank you very much. Uh, that was very interesting. Thank you. Great. Thanks very much for coming. I want to know, uh, Sheldon, what are you going to be speaking about with CBC this weekend? When are you on the radio? Yeah, um, CBC Radio in Montreal, uh, 88.5. Uh, they have a show on the weekends called All in a Weekend. And uh, they learned about the Learn uh, Quebec uh, uh, webinars and uh, about our virtual birding trips on Saturday mornings. So they want to interview me on the radio. Uh, the original plan is to do it this coming Sunday, but we spoke today uh, to prepare for it and they're going to see if they can schedule it for Saturday morning instead. And the reason for that is they'd like to do it while we're actually out on our back deck watching birds on Saturday morning. So it's either going to be Sunday morning or Saturday morning. It's supposed to be around 10 minutes past eight in the morning. So if you're around at that time, you can check on CBC radio either Saturday morning or Sunday morning. It'll be one of the two. Um, I'll probably know by tomorrow. So what I might do is put a message up on our uh, Facebook group about that. Uh, so if you check our Facebook group, which we invite you to to go and check out, there's lots of good information there. Um, Thank you, uh, Sheldon. We'll... I do have a question in the chat from Sandra. I yep. have three robins hanging out around the yard and they look young and clueless. Is it possible <laughs> that these are new fledged siblings? I don't think so. Not at this early stage. I know the robins are starting to nest right now. Our neighbor has a nest in his backyard. I think uh, he told us this week that they had laid their eggs already, uh, but I don't think you'd be seeing young robins out of nests at this point. Uh, yep, yeah, there, uh, <laughs> there are uh, there are some that you know some younger birds, maybe first year birds that might look a little different. Uh, so chances of having any babies around though right now, I I don't think so. Uh, any final questions from anyone? We're going to say thank you to Sheldon. We, we've spent a lot of time with you today and we really appreciate it. And we look forward to raptors and gardening, with, um, garden friendly birds or no, bird friendly gardens. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, thank you. Have a good rest of the day. Thank you everyone right. for coming. Thanks for coming everybody. Bye. Yeah, you can, you can make a whole bunch of noise now. That's no problem. <laughs> Bye.